So as I'm sure you've heard by now, Donald Trump was banned from Twitter and Facebook a couple of days ago, which I'm sure that we all knew was coming. But I think that no matter what, whether you agree with their decision to ban him or not, this should be alarming for everyone because I think that this is putting us in a position where we're repeating what happened in America with race, but only this time it's with politics. Now, if that sounds crazy to you, let me explain. Now, it wasn't even 100 years ago that racial segregation was thriving in America. And it wasn't too long ago that blacks weren't allowed to vote. Um, blacks couldn't drink from the same water fountain as whites. Um, blacks weren't allowed to go to white schools and so on. So now the problem with racism in America has gotten significantly better in the last 60 years or so, as far more places slowly began to become more diverse. Uh, workplaces began to include different races and culture and diverse races started to live together in harmony. So now the places where racism still has a stronger grip on culture are places where there's much less integration. People in these areas don't interact much at all with people of different races, and because of that, they don't have to talk with people from other races while they're at work or while they're shopping and so on. If you don't interact with people that look different than you, then it makes it incredibly easy for you to caricature those people and ultimately make you feel superior to those people. Also importantly, you might not have as much of an opportunity to understand just how much you have in common with those other people than you initially thought. So integration has helped us to see the humanity in other races and cultures and allowed us to befriend people who otherwise we may not have. Now, fast forward until today, where we have social media whose algorithms have actually contributed to creating a different kind of segregation. The algorithm on the social media platforms were initially designed to market to you. They were designed to learn quickly about your interests and your beliefs and your hobbies and so on, so that way they can punt you into a bucket and in turn, that makes it easier for them to market to you. But an unfortunate consequence of this is that when it comes to ideology, social media has created an environment where you interact less and less with the people that you don't agree with, and you interact more and more with the people that you already do agree with. So obviously, the more time that you spend on their platforms, the more money they're going to make, and the more upset that they can make you, the longer that you're going to stay on their platforms. So they've essentially found a way to monetize our rage. So it actually works out best for them the more that we divide, and the more upset we get in our division, the more unlikely we are to want to even hear what the other side has to say, and all this does is to divide us further and further away like never before. Now, the major news and media outlets also picked up on this, and they copied the same strategy. So they started to use more and more inflammatory language and rhetoric and divide more sharply on ideology. So this helped them because it enabled them to keep their viewers watching them and the viewers would never watch the other side because they shunned the other side. But this has created yet another additional problem. In America, virtually all of the media companies have sided with one ideology. So what that means is that only one side now really has a voice when it comes to major news outlets or late night talk shows and so on. Now what's so ironic about this is that the last election showed that nearly 50% of Americans didn't share that ideology, even though virtually 100% of the media has the same ideology. And now we come to the place where the rubber meets the road. A couple of days ago, Donald Trump was banned from both Twitter and Facebook due to them claiming that Trump is inciting violence and civil unrest. Now, people are debating whether or not that was true, but the better question is, even if he was, what do you think is going to happen now? Does banning Trump really help to stop the violence and domestic hostility in America? Does banning Trump really help fix the problem of segregation? Of course it doesn't. Instead, it's just guaranteed to make the hostility far worse, which is a problem for all of us. Now the 18 million people who follow Trump on Twitter are flocking to platforms like Parler, where he's allowed to say whatever he wants. All they did was isolate people even further away from each other and guarantee that now they won't even have the ability to have their claims challenged and they won't even have to hear what the other side has to say about all of it. Now this definitely isn't good news for someone like me who actually wants to hear the different sides of an issue so that way I can process and think through both sides of the issue for myself and come to my own conclusions. Now, thanks to Twitter and platforms like them, most people now are only gonna hear one side of the story without even having to question whether or not they've been lied to or they've been fed wrong information or anything like that on both sides of the debate. So if you thought that we were living in different realities before, you haven't seen nothing yet. If the algorithms didn't separate us enough, shutting down conversations between two groups of people that represent nearly half of the population has only pushed us further into this decade's new sphere of segregation. Now we're entering into a place that's more so like how it was 100 years ago in America. But maybe there's hope. 
When we think back to racism, integration is what helped to start the healing. But this healing started in large part from what Christianity had to say about human life. Because Christianity taught that all people are created in the image of God, all people are worthy of equal value, dignity, and love. Building off of that foundation is what fixed so many problems in the past and what gave way to the good things in this country like free speech and equal rights. So the question now is, can we apply these same principles in this situation? Well, us that are Christians can. But I guess you can ask, will it work? The thing about America is that most people consider themselves to be Christian. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that all of the people who claim to be Christian really are, but I'm hoping that there's enough common ground with those who call themselves Christians, or even all of the people who share the Christian values that all humans do deserve equal treatment. If so, then that can start the healing process once again. But you might be thinking that it's far too late for that sort of thing, and it's far too late to fix America. What if it starts with the censoring of conservatives and then moves on to censoring Christians, which leads to a period of the mark of the beast and the Antichrist? If that's the case, then things still don't change for those of us that are Christians. Our calling doesn't change, and our focus doesn't change. Our focus is still on Christ and his kingdom and will continue to love God and will continue to love our neighbors. We need to remember that this world is not our home. As Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, then my servants would be fighting to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. So in everything, we do our best and we trust in God to do the rest. And if we find ourselves too invested into the world and the things of this world, then we need to remember that our real investments are eternal and they're not of this world. So while we're still here on this earth, let's get active and working at a local level to show people the love of Christ and help to bring as many people as we can to a knowledge of God's grace and what it means for their lives. On all things, we have the peace of knowing that Christ is still king and he's still on the throne. I've got a whole lot more to say about all of this stuff that's going on lately, so make sure you turn on the notification bell. But the next time that you find yourself struggling with keeping your mind right, what are you going to say? What do you mean?